is depressed about the fact that in the middle of his davening, he ends up getting distracted. And what this, what, what this means, in other words, is that a person thinks that what is my learning, what is my davening worth? Now, the difference again is Gavra and Chefza. The, pre, the third, I, I, I kept saying three or four because the third and fourth are very similar. In both cases, he's, he's, he feels a lack of accomplishment. But the first case, the, the problem number three is, a problem is in himself. What am I worth? What did I change? I didn't change myself. I didn't, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a successful scholar. I'm not a person that's a, a gentle person. I still, I still have the same bad middays. I'm still the ba same bad person I always was. I'm still the same uh, simple person I always was. In, this, in the, the next chapter, in chapter 28, the problem that he's thinking is, what is my learning worth? It's not about me so much as, what is my davening worth? If I can get distracted in the middle of my davening, probably my davening is not worth anything. If I have to spend an hour on three lines of Gemara, then what's the point? What's my learning worth? Look at that rabbi, he can sit for an hour and go through 20 pages of Gemara. So his learning is worth something. Look at that rabbi, he can sit and pray and davening and sway back and forth, and you see that he's in a whole different world. That's a davening. But my davening, I'm barely saying the words. I'm, every once in a while, I have some kavanah that's worth something. So it's a similar feeling that I'm not accomplishing. But here, I'm not so much depressed about myself. Here, I'm depressed about what's my davening worth, what's my learning worth. If, I, if it, I'm constantly getting struck, I'm constantly getting distracted from it, what is it actually worth? So for this, Dr. Rebbe points out, <coughs> Dr. Rebbe says that when it comes to back to wrestling again, when you see that the enemy... When you see that the enemy is coming to distract you and bother you, that, well, I'm sorry, in, in, a, in a wrestling match, <laughs> we're busy. If, if you, if when, when, the, when the wrestlers, when the wrestler A is about to win the match and wrestler B feels that it's almost over, that's when he works the hardest because he realizes that it's, it's now or never. And he puts in his, his greatest efforts to the last moment to try to win back, to, to fight back. So as Rebbe says, the fact that the Yitzhahara keeps coming to distract you from your learning and distract you from your davening, that itself shows how important your davening and learning is. Because if it wouldn't be important, he would just let you laven and learn. So the, the, the mere fact that he's coming and bothering you shows how special it is to Hashem, that Hashem wa uh, that, and, and the Yitzhahara is so afraid of it, and that's why he has to come and bother it. Um, the Rebbe continues at the end of the chapter, and he just says that if somebody feels that that he's really, he can't distract, he's thinking to himself, okay, my davening is so important, but he still can't get over it. How the Rebbe says, he's just in the middle of davening, he can stop for a few moments, and in his mind, ask Hashem, Hashem, please, let me, let me continue davening, let me continue focusing on my prayers, nothing should bother me. That's already in short, Mr. Hashem, a uh, different time. Okay,